الحمد لله وكفى والسلام على عباده الذين اصطفى أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يوم لا ينفع مال ولا بنون إلا من أطى الله بقلب سليم وقال الله تعالى في مقام آخر ذلك جزاء من تزكى سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد المبارك وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد وبارك وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد وبارك وسلم Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala He has given us two things One is our bodies the jism that we have, the eyes, the nose, the lips, the tongue, the ears, the head, the hands, the legs, the feet. This is something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us. But in reality, this is not what makes us human beings. Because animals have eyes, Animals have teeth, animals have nose, animals have ears, animals have limbs. So what's the difference? If we have all of these and animals have all of these, so what's the difference between us and the animals? The difference is the ruh that is, uh, is within us, the spirit, the soul, whatever you want to call it in English. But the ruh is the difference. Our ruh is different from the ruh of the animals. So we are, we, are, we are made up of two things, our bodies and our ruh. And the problem is that we tend to forget that we have a ruh. And the only focus that we all have is our bodies. That's what we take care of every single day and night, from the start to the end. That's what we reflect about. That's what we have concerns about. We have different sorts of shampoos that we can buy. This is for normal hair. This is for dry hair. This is for itchy head. This is for this anti-dandruff. We have all of these sort, different sorts of makeups. These foundations, the lipsticks different soaps, different perfumes, different lotions. What is that all about? It is about our body and this is a proof that all what we care about is our bodies. That's all what we think about day in and day out. Our clothes, our bags, what brand, what types of clothes. That's all what we think about. What sort of house, which car. That's our targets. I'm not saying that we should not do that. I've not said that at all. What I'm saying is that looks like this is our only concern. That's all what we think about. That's our, that's the biggest problem, problem of humanity in general. That all what we think about is our outer being, that what we look at, our bodies. But we never think about our ruh, which is our reality, which is the in reality the human being. You know, when a child is in the womb of the mother, a time comes when the angel, he puts that ruh in the body of the baby. And after that, you will start feeling the heartbeat, the baby starts moving, and you know, the, the the expecting mothers, they will go, and I feel like the baby is kicking, right? That's, and then the person, the doctor will say, oh, you know what, now the baby is moving. 
There is a time before that the baby was moving. What was not in there? The body was there. What was not in there? The ruh was not there. And then the baby comes out and it lives all of this life. And a time comes when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends another angel. That's a different angel. And what does that angel do? That angel takes out that ruh. The angels, he takes out that ruh from the body. And that is the time when the human being dies. While well, the body remains, you can still see that person lying down on the bed, but he's not moving anymore. Same nose, same ears, same eyes, same limbs, but it's, it's not moving. What was, what's the difference between the body, the body that was there a couple of hours ago and now? The ruh has left. The ruh has left. We don't even call that person by his name anymore. We don't call him Aisha, we don't call him Khadija, we don't call her uh, Maryam, we don't call her Maria, we don't call her anything. What do we call her now? A dead body. Oh, wash the dead body. Take the dead body from the hospital. Bury the dead body. Put the kafan on the dead body. Take off the clothes, put on the kafan, wash it. Now, poor Maryam, poor Aisha, poor Khadija has become a dead body. What was, what has become? What's the difference? Ruh. So our reality is Ruh. That's a proof, isn't it? That Maryam has gone back. Maria has gone back. Khadija has gone back. Aisha has gone back. They went back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The dead body has remained behind, which we put into the that six feet long ditch. Right? And some bodies, insect eat, eat them. Others, if people are righteous, Allah Ta'ala preserves their bodies as well in the graves. But that's not the bigger concern. The bigger concern has been the ruh, which we never thought about. At the center of the ruh in the human being is called the spiritual heart. Qalb, as in Arabic. And Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala talks about this qalb, this, this, this spiritual heart in the Qur'an at a lot of places. And when people, they take care of their roof, they think about their roof, in reality, they are taking care of that spiritual heart. They are taking care of that qalb. And Allah Ta'ala wants that we take care of our qalb. Allah Ta'ala wants that we take care of our spiritual heart. Allah Ta'ala wants that we work on our roof. Because this is the reality of human beings. And Allah Ta'ala says in this ayat that I recited in the beginning of, of today's talk, Allah Ta'ala says that on the day of judgment, nothing will benefit you. All of this time that you spent on buying branded bags and foundations and lipsticks and shampoos and soaps and clothes and all of that, this is not going to benefit you. Irrespective of how much money did you spend on that. The children that you have given birth to, that you always think that, oh, they're going to be my support when I become old, they're not going to benefit you on the Day of Judgment. What will benefit? يَوْمَ لَا يَنْفَعُ مَانُ وَلَا بَنُونَ On that day, your wealth and your children will not be of any benefit. إِلَّا مَنْ أَطَ اللَّهَ بِقَلْبٍ سَلِيمٍ Except who comes to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with a sound heart. What will benefit on that day? The sound heart, the sound spiritual heart. The sound spiritual heart is the only thing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will look at. And in fact, even in this dunya, the only thing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala looks at is the heart. There's a hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He says that, إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يَنْظُرُ إِلَىٰ أَمْوَالِ إِلَىٰ إِلَىٰ صُوَرِكُمْ وَأَمْوَالِكُمْ That Allah ta'ala does not look at your Faces and he does not look at your wealth. وَلَكِنْ يَنْظُرُ إِلَىٰ قُلُوبِكُمْ وَأَعْمَالِكُمْ But he looks at your hearts and he looks at your actions, your a'mal. And subhanAllah, our, the dilemma is that we spend so much effort and energy and time on the thing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not even look at. People look at it, yes. People look at our faces, people look at our clothes, people look at our, what, you know, what are we up to. So, 
to give the rights of the people, yes, we must wear good clothes, we must make sure that we are presentable. I'm not denying that. Don't misunderstand me, please. I'm not denying that. In fact, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has said in one of the hadiths that if Allah Ta'ala has given you blessings, then Allah Ta'ala loves to see the effect of His blessings on, on His slaves. This is good that if Allah Ta'ala has given you, you wear good dresses and all of that. As far as within the bounds of Sharia. Yes. But, we don't put any effort on which Allah Ta'ala looks at, and that is the hearts. Inna Allah la yandhru ila, ila suwarikum wa, wa amwalikum. Allah Ta'ala does not look at your faces. Your dark skinned, your light skinned, your fair skinned, your brown. Does not matter to Allah. Everybody is the same to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. You are wealthy, you are poor. Allah Ta'ala does not care about that as well. What does Allah Ta'ala care about? How is your heart? Did you take care of your heart? This was your, this was your reality? This was you being human? Did you take care of your heart? If you did not, then Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala gets upset. He gets angry at that person. So our job in this life is to take care of our heart every single day. Just like we make sure that our house is clean every single day, we need to make sure that we our hearts are clean every single day of our life as well. Every single day. You know, if you don't clean your house for, say, for a week, what will happen then? It will be very, very tough to clean it afterwards. You will have to spend maybe extra couple of hours, extra three, four hours to clean that. True or not true? You know, it's because the dust will accumulate. It will possibly be very, very hard to, to wash it then. But if you clean it every day, then it's become so easy to clean it. Just like that, we have to clean our heart. We have to keep our heart sound every single day of our life. If you let it, if, the, if you let the dust settle on the heart, the filth settle on the heart for a week, for a month, for a year, for five years, for ten years, then it will be very difficult to clean our hearts after that. Very difficult. And that's our problem because we have never cleaned our hearts. We have kept it filthy. Now even people who try to clean it, it takes them years before they actually get it. They, they, they are able to clean it. So this is our job. What is the filth of the heart? The filth of the heart are the sins. The filth of the heart are the sins. Any disobedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and any disobedience of the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is the filth of the heart. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has said in this hadith that whenever a person sins, there is a black dot that appears on the heart, on the spiritual heart. There is a black dot that appears on the heart. And if people, they ask for forgiveness from Allah, they do tawbah, they make a promise to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala that they are not going to repeat that anymore, then Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala washes that black dot. He removes that. It's like cleaning the house. Your heart gets, heart gets clean right away. If we don't do tawbah, if we don't repent, if we don't ask for forgiveness, and we sin again, another sin or the same sin, another black dot appears. And we continue sinning, we continue being disobedient to Allah Ta'ala, we continue being disobedient to the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and these black dots continue to appear on the heart, and a time comes when the whole heart becomes black, and then there become, comes a seal on the heart. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that in the Quran, Kalla bal rana ala qulubihim. That there is a seal on their heart. Why? Because of what they have been doing. Because of the sins that they have been doing. There comes a seal on the heart. And when the seal comes on the heart, then it's very difficult to break that seal. Only Allah ta'ala's mercy can break that seal. So we have to be very careful about what we are doing on our daily, in our daily life. We have to be very, very concerned as to what do we do. We have to think about every single thing what we do. Once, twice, thrice. And then if it is according to the commandments of Allah Ta'ala, if it is according to the commandments of the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, only then we should do that. Otherwise we should just leave it, up, put, leave it on the side. 
This is the goal of life. This is the purpose of life. Allah Ta'ala says, تَبَارَكَ الَّذِي بِيَدِهِ الْمُلْكِ وَهُوَ عَلَى كُلِّ شَيْءٍ قَدِيرٍ الذي خلق الموت والحياة ليبلوكم أيكم أحسن أملا. The only purpose of life and death is that who Allah Taala wants to look at and who comes back to Him with good actions, who leaves the sins and who does the good actions. This is the whole purpose of life. The purpose of life is nothing else. Purpose of life is to make sure that we live a life of obedience of Allah and we live a life. Of the of the Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and we can die a good death. We can die a death in that state, and a state where our hearts are clean, where our hearts are sound, so that we can present that heart to Allah subhanahu wa taala on that day, where nothing will benefit except the soundness of the heart. This is why we are here in this life, and everything that we else that we do, everything else, it should be according to that. You know, we we get married, we have children, we deal with our families, our friends, our relatives. All of that should surround that surround Sharia and Sunnah. Yani everything should be done according to Sharia and according to Sunnah. Our marriages, our interactions, our children, everything should be according to Sharia and Sunnah. And when we do everything according to Sharia and Sunnah, according to the laws of of Deen of Islam, then our hearts remain sound. And this is a struggle that we all need to go through. And one more thing that I'll tell you, that just like the bodies that we have, we are made up of two things, the bodies and the roof. Just like the bodies, they need nourishment in order to remain sound. They need nourishment in order to remain sound. We eat food three times a day, two times a day. Some people eat four times a day, five times a day. It's also bad, by the way. But people eat food every day. Why? So that the bodies remain sound. If we have to keep our hearts sound, we need to know that the hearts also need nourishment. We also have to give the food to the heart as well. It's not only the body that we have to give food to. Our hearts also need food. What is the food of the heart? All of these good deeds are the food for the heart, are the nourishment of the heart. Starting from our rituals, our wudu, our prayers, our fasting, our hajj, the zakat, charity, being good with others, helping others, caring, smiling. All the other rathkar, tilawat of the Quran, tasbihat, all of these are the nourishment of the heart. Just like the food that we eat is the nourishment of the jism, of the body. What happens if we don't nourish the body? What happens? The bodies will start feeling lethargic. They start feeling weak. If you don't give the food to the body for some more time, what happens? They will fall sick, very natural. They will get diseased. What if we don't give the food to the body still? What will happen then? A time will come that the body will die, right? If you don't give food to anybody for like say three, four, five, seven days, a time will come that we fall weak, become sick, and will die. Very soon. Just like that, when we don't give the food, the nourishment to the spiritual heart, first it falls weak, then it gets diseased, and then if you still don't give food to the body, to the heart, it dies. It dies its spiritual death. Same phenomena. So, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants that we keep our hearts nourished in order to keep it sound. So all, and just like another example, another similarity, is that if we poison the body, despite of the fact that we are giving it food, despite of the fact that we are giving it food, but if we also eat poison at the very same time, what will happen? The body will die. If we are give nourishing the heart, but if we poison the heart, then it will also die a spiritual death. 
So what is the nourishment? I already said the nourishment are the good deeds. All the good deeds. Starting from the rituals to our interactions. The good interactions, helping each other out, smiling, caring, loving. These are all the nourishment of the heart. And we all must give nourishment to the heart. What is the poison for the heart? The poison for the heart are all the sins. Every single sin that we do, as I said, that it will put a black dot on the heart, that sin it acts like a poison for the heart. Sometimes the poison is less dangerous, but at other times the poisons are very dangerous. Some poisons will make your heart die in a second. Right? And it will make your body die in a second. Similarly, some poisons, some sins are such that it will make your heart die in a second. In a, in a millisecond. And there are other poisons, you know, sometimes they don't have that deep effect. But we, when we continue doing that, there is a long-lasting effect of that and it will also cause the spiritual heart to die. So all of the sins have different effects. And subhanAllah, we don't even think about our sins. And we are sinning day and night. And subhanAllah, at the very same time, we are praying and we are fasting and we, give, we are giving in charity and we are sending our kids to Muslim schools. You know, so that they can, you know, mashallah, learn deen, they go through all of this maktab system, they go, they, 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 they get to know about, you know, our prayers and our wudu and, and how all the, all the rulings of all of that. And they're doing all of that, you're doing all of that. But at the very same time, you know, what we are doing is we're eating poisons. We are sinning. We're not taking care of our, uh, of the sins. We are not taking care of our, of our eyes, for example. We go and, and we watch movies. Hollywoods, Bollywoods, whatever. Right? Indian movies, English movies. And people have a lot of habit of watching these drama serials. Pakistani dramas, Indian dramas. They, they are sitting in front of their TV without even realizing that it is a sin. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, قُلْ لِلْمُؤْمِنِينَ يَغُضُّوا مِنْ أَبْصَارِهِمْ Tell the believing men that they should lower their gaze. وَيَحْفِذُوا فُرُوجَهُمْ And they should guard their modesty, their private parts. وَقُلْ لِلْمُؤْمِنَاتِ يَغْضُدَّ مِنْ أَبْصَارِهِنَّ And also tell the believing women that if they're really believing, if they're saying, La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah, tell them that they should also lower their gaze. And they should also guard their modesty. It's a hukam in the Qur'an, it's the order in the Qur'an. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the, the Lord of the heavens and the earth, who is nourishing us, sustaining us, keeping us alive, is providing us all of these blessings. He is the one telling us, lower your gaze. And we don't do that. We watch all of what we watch. And it's a sin and we don't even think about it as a sin. Right? We would possibly not fornicate. Possibly not go and rob people's houses. Possibly not go and, you know, cut people's hands or, you know, harm people through any... We not inflict any wounds. We don't do any any of that because we think, oh, it's bad. But if we don't think of these things that are bad, as bad, it's a sin. It's a sin, and we when we continue doing that, you know, it's slowly poisoning our heart, and our hearts become dead. We're praying, we're fasting, we're giving in charity, but we are also slowly poisoning our heart, and it becomes dead. At first, it becomes diseased, and then it becomes it becomes it dies. Our tongue, subhanAllah, we say, we talk without thinking. We don't even think once before what we say. SubhanAllah, especially, everybody, you know, men have their own issues, women have their own issues. Women, one of the bigger issues that they have is their tongue. They will sit and they will just talk and talk and talk. There's a joke that somebody said that whoever will come up with the biggest lie, I will give him a prize. So there is a prize money for the one who will come up with the biggest lie. So people came with different lies. Somebody just made up a story and he said, no, 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 it doesn't, it's just not that good. Other person came with another story. He said, no, no, it's, it's not that big. One man came. He said, you know what? I was at a place and there were five women sitting and they were all quiet. <laughs> so he said, yeah, you deserve the prize. How can there be five women sitting together and they're all quiet? SubhanAllah. Now they are quiet, by the way. And guess why? They are quiet because everybody is on their cell phones. All messaging and, you know, SubhanAllah. And this, 
<laughs> disease of Facebook and this WhatsApp. People are just telling all the time, oh, now I'm sitting, now I'm standing, the sun is out and it's cloud and it's raining and it's dusty and, you know, now I'm in the toilet and now I'm in the washroom and now I'm cooking and now I'm eating. SubhanAllah. What has shaitan done with all of us? We don't even realize. SubhanAllah. It's made us so heedless. But one of the issues that women have is that they talk and without even thinking, what are they saying? They will harm people without even knowing that they've harmed people. People will just poke into people's personal issues for no reason without thinking that it might have harmed them. Subhanallah so girl, say for example, she is 28, 29, say for example, she has she has not gotten married for whatever reason. And you ask, oh, how old are you? I'm this much, 28, 29. Oh, you, why, have you, why haven't you gotten married so far? Well, I mean, it's not her choice. She wanted to. Allah Ta'ala did not send her a proposal so far. Inshallah, whenever the time will be written by Allah Ta'ala, it will come. Why are you asking? Just be quiet if she told you that she hasn't married. Why are you not married? What's it? What's this question about? Why? You know, you will add, people will meet with another uh, a woman and she's married for five years. Oh, how many children do you have? I have none. I don't have any children. You don't have any children? How long have you been married? Five years. Five years? You're not, you have not, don't have children. Poor lady, she's already worried about that she didn't have children. And you are just like putting the spice on the wounds. Why do you have to ask? She told you she didn't have any children. She has been married for five years. That's it. Why did you have to ask the question of why don't, why, what's her fault? Allah Ta'ala decided not to give her children so far. Why do you have to poke into these things? You know, these sort of things. Sometimes people don't want to tell few things, right? For example, our Mashaikh always recommend that if you're expecting a baby, you know, initially you don't go and advertise it to the whole world, you know, because of different reasons. But, you know, and, and, you know, you realize maybe for some reason that there's somebody who might be expecting, oh, are you expecting? But she doesn't want to tell. She is not, she does not want to tell now. Inshallah, she will tell when the time will come. Are you expecting? And she is now doing tawriya. She is like making, somehow trying to ignore your comments. And you will just be after her. Don't no, no, tell me. Feels like you're expecting. You didn't. Well, if she had to tell, she had already been told you. Why do we have to go into people's lives and, you know, ask all of these unnecessary questions? We don't know. We are harming, hurting people through our tongue. And this is something that I'm saying which people don't even realize. And there are other things which are open sins, backbiting, rebirth. And people are doing it day in and day out. Any two people will sit together and will start talking about a third person. Three people will sit together and start talking about a fourth person. Four people will sit together and start talking about a fifth person. Al-ghibatu ashaddu min zina Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa has said, backbiting is worse than fornication. And we feel we take fornication as such a big sin, but we don't even care about when we are backbiting. We don't even think that we are doing something that is worse than back fornication. You know, we are putting, setting priorities of the sins. It's not about our prioritization. It's about the priority, prioritization of Allah Ta'ala and His Messenger Wasallam. They are saying, if you are backbiting, your sin is over zina. So if there's a girl who has done zina and you are backbiting, you are worse than, than that girl. Have you ever thought about it? And then lies. Lies is such a common sin. We don't even think and we say things which are lie. Very common. And then shaitan is given, given in different names. Sometimes shaitan will say, oh, I just made an excuse. Sometimes, oh, I was just kidding. Well, you're not kidding. You were lying. Shaitan has given it a different name so that you don't feel bad about it. And lie is such a major sin. Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said, a Muslim can do anything except but, but lying. Yani, there is no way that a Muslim can lie. We have to think five times before what we say. So that it's not a lie. So that it doesn't harm people. So that it, it's not a back, it's not backbiting. And we are saying, we are talking just because we have the habit of talking. We are, we are sinning. And some of them are major sins. Some of them are those poisons that will make your heart dead in an instant. And others, maybe 
they are slow poisoning as well. And we are, because we continue doing that, our hearts, our hearts die very, very soon. Because we are poisoning it, despite of the fact that we are praying. We are, we are doing all of the other good things. We are poisoning our, 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 our hearts. And there are many other sins that we don't even think about. We have these ill feelings in our hearts for others. Somebody, you know, didn't call us on our birthday. Subhanallah. And then you will have that grudge in your heart just because of the fact that she didn't call on you, you on your birthday. She didn't invite me on our wedding party. But subhanallah, poor lady, you know, she was inviting 100 people. She forgot you for some reason. Human being, mistake, all of us are, us are weak people. But that's it. Now I'm not going to talk to you for the rest of my life. I had ill feelings in the hearts. Grudges. Somebody did, said something in a tone and that, I mean, then you, you just think of it as bad and then that's it. You're not ready to forgive. You're not ready to forgive that person anymore. SubhanAllah, it is not allowed in our deen to break up ties with anybody for more than three days. For more than three days. And that's also the wisdom of shariat. Maybe it's very natural that we may get angry at something, but anger should come down within three days. And with, after three days, it should be all over. But we just keep grudges in our hearts. Mother-in-laws, daughter-in-laws, subhanAllah. You know, oh, she said that, and she said that, or why did she not say that, and why did she not say that? SubhanAllah, all our life, as if we are in a war zone. Literally, as if we are in a battlefield. Subhanallah, we are here. Allah Ta'ala gave us this life to love each other. And we are here in a war zone, fighting, battling, swords, literally attacking, getting chance. Somehow, how can I get a chance that I can take the revenge? Somebody will hit us with a, with a stone and will want to hit them back with a brick. <coughs> this is our reality, isn't it? And this is poisoning our hearts. All of these are sins. All of this is poisoning our hearts. Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Silman qata'aka. You join with those who cut off from you. And you forgive those who oppress you. You forgive those who oppress you. That's our deen. And we are here ready to take revenge. Waiting to take revenge. Hearts are so stingy. Stinginess is also a sin. It's also poison. We are, Allah Ta'ala has given us so much. We are so wealthy. Allah Ta'ala has blessed us. But subhanAllah, because somebody gave us a, a hundred rand gift, and we only want to give her back a hundred rand gift. SubhanAllah. She might can only afford a hundred rand gift. And if Allah Ta'ala has made, given you so much and you can afford more, why cannot you go and give her back a five hundred rand gift? What is stopping you? Stinginess, small hearts. SubhanAllah. She didn't give anything to my son on last Eid. I'm not to going to give her anything as well in this Eid. That's Eid coming Eid. It looks like as if we are doing business with people. A trade. She gave me 10 rands. I'll also give her 10 rands. That's it. Not even a penny more. Small hearts. Bukhul. Shuh. Allah Ta'ala has mentioned all of that in the Quran. This is all. These are all sins. Allah Ta'ala has given you more, give it out. Open your heart. Spend it. And Allah Ta'ala will give you more. And if you keep it within yourself, then Allah Ta'ala will give you counted as well. Today you have blessings. Tomorrow you may get, it is a possibility that Allah Ta'ala can, may take away your blessings. What will you do then? There are people I've seen with my own eyes, literally, literally, honestly, coming from riches to the rags. Multi-millionaires coming down to, you know, uh, in a position where they literally had loans. They had to take loans from people in order to survive. Allah Ta'ala has given us blessings. He can take all of these blessings away. He can. SubhanAllah, what's happening in Kashmir right now, in, in the Indian Kashmir? It has been raining for, for days. SubhanAllah, there were, there, there is water everywhere. There are literally, you know, children who are who, 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 are, who, are, who, have, who have died. Old people have died. Young people have died. You know, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, 
He grasps people because of their sins, then nobody can save people from his grasp. So these are all sins, and we have to think we can go on and on and on. But there is a long list, but these are the things that we commonly do in our life. Not taking care of our eyes, our limbs, our, our tongues, our hearts, ill feelings, jealousy. Jealousy, people are jealous. Why did she get that, and why did I not get that? Jealousy, hatred, animosities, stinginess, lack of sugar, no gratefulness in the heart. Always complaining and complaining and complaining. When you ask people, how are you doing? Pathetic. Horrible. Could have been better. Not so good. Or not so bad. So well, not so bad. Yani, I'm bad, but not so bad. These sort of statements. Oh, and we are immersed in the blessings of Allah Ta'ala. Live in a palace. Honestly, live in a palace. Eat whatever you want to eat. Cook whatever you want to cook. Wear whatever you want to wear. Wear, we take branded bags. Drive brand, like big luxury cars. Have all the blessings but complaints and complaints and complaints. Lack of sugar. No gratefulness. We have to be very careful. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, لَإِن شَكَرْتُمْ لَأَزِيدَنَّكُمْ If you're grateful to the blessings of Allah, he will increase you in your, in your blessing. This is the promise of Allah. Wala in kafartum. But if you are ungrateful, in adabi la shadid, then also know that my punishment is very severe. In other words, I can take away the blessings. I can take back the blessings if you are ungrateful to Allah. Once Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi he went to the women after Eid prayers. He went to, to the back uh, talking to women that for the sunnah. And he was saying that I was shown the hellfire and I saw that the majority of the people of the hellfire are women. And the Sahabiyat, radiallahu ta'ala anhum, she, they got very amazed. That why is that the majority of the women, majority of the people of the fire are women? And Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that one of the reasons is that they are ungrateful to their husbands. Any husbands, they do so much for them all their life. And there they know it, that he does so much. But one small little thing happens, and they say to their husband, you have never done any good to me all, 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 all my life. They forget about every single thing that has been done to them. Ungratefulness becomes the cause, the source of women going into the fire. Women are ungrateful. Lack of sugar. And then lack of sabr as well, lack of patience. That's also a sin. Small little thing happens and people are, they, 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 just, they are just, they just blast. Screaming, shouting. Their, people, their women actually go to the extremes of pulling their hair and pulling their clothes. It's all absolutely forbidden in our deen. We have to be patient. Patient. Everything is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Everything is written in our destiny, in our taqdeer. We have to be patient. Allah Ta'ala says that, that, you know, when calamity falls on you, you should be patient. Say, inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un. All of these are sins. They are all poisons. And subhanAllah, I'm talking about those people who actually, who actually do pray, who actually do fast, who actually do give zakat, who actually do fast the month of Ramadan, who actually do try to, you know, they go to hajj, do the fara'id, they do cover up, they do cover all of themselves up. They are the one who do guard, do, do guard their modesty. I'm talking about those people, yani who are doing their faraid, giving the nourishment to the heart, and then they are poisoning their heart at the same time as well. But there are others who will not even nourish their hearts. Who will not even nourish their hearts. They will not even do the basics, which is, which is the nourishment of the heart. Five times daily prayer is the nourishment of the heart. You miss one, you're not nourishing your heart. Your heart will start falling weak and weak and weak and then will get diseased and will die if you make it one less. Allah Ta'ala has for a reason given us five prayers, given us five prayers. Not four, not three, not two, not one. Five. There are many who will not pray. Subhanallah. As salatu imadu deen. Prayer is the pillar of the religion. Yani, just like there's a building which has pillars, so this, our religion is like that building. And the pillars are the prayers. And you take off a pillar and the whole building of our religion will fall up, fall down. 
It's as if you're not nourishing our heart properly. If we leave out one prayer, there were many women who are very careless about, you know, their prayers after they get pure from their monthly cycles. They will be just lazy. They will just miss out on a prayer for no reason. Just because they're lazy. There are women who get married and they don't, they don't pray because they're in the, in the state of Janava. They're in the state of major ritual bath and they will not, they will not pray. Because they are lazy, they don't want to take a, take a bath. SubhanAllah. It is as if you're not nourishing our hearts. We're not nourishing our hearts properly. There are women who don't fast. They miss their fast during the month of Ramadan because of their, because of their monthlies. And subhanAllah, they will never make up those fasts later on. That it is as if you're not nourishing your heart properly. There are people, there are women who would not even give out zakat despite of the fact that they have gold. And they, they, and they have all of this personal wealth, but they don't care about their zakat. Subhanallah. Once Prophet Sahabiyat came to the Prophet Sallallahu and they were very gold bangles. And Prophet Sallallahu asked them, did you give zakat of these bangles? And they said, no, Ya Rasulullah. And said, do you want that Allah Ta'ala put on the bangle of fire or in your hands on the day of judgment? Go and give zakat. And there are women who don't give zakat. And so, subhanAllah, there are women who won't cover up. Who won't cover up. You know, some women, they think that it's oppression. Maaz Allah. As if there is an oppression done on them by asking them to cover up. You know, this is an honor. It's an ikram that has been done to women by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You forget about that. You know, when you have something precious in your house, where do you keep it? In the open? Do you keep it in the courtyard of your house? No. You, you for example, you have a diamond ring. Mashallah. Live in South Africa. Mashallah, famous for diamonds and gold. So see, you have a diamond ring, a solitaire. And you don't, will never keep it in the open. You know that people will come into your house to clean the house and all of that. You will make sure that you cover it, put it in a box and put it in a locker or drawer in a safe place. Why? Because it is a precious thing. But what about your pen, a normal pen? Will you keep it in a locker as well? No. It's okay, you can keep it outside. Why is not that precious? Just like that, Allah Ta'ala has said, all of you are precious. You're very precious. Honestly, you're so precious, all of you. And Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala has said that you must keep yourself covered up. You cannot just be out in the street open. Why? Because all of these robbers, these men, these robbers are, will come and rob you. Don't come out open. Cover yourself up. Guard yourself. Protect yourself. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran has described the women of the paradise. Allah ta'ala says, وَحُورٌ عِينْكَ أَمْثَالِ اللُّؤْلُؤِ الْمَكْنُونَ the people, these big-eyed women in the paradise, their example is like they're hidden pearls. They're hidden pearls. The pearls that are hidden in a, in a shell. They're not open. They're beautiful. And they're hidden. It's an honor. It's an ikram. You're so precious. And when we decide not to cover ourselves up, it is as if we are rejecting that honor, that ikram, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given to all of us. Ya Allah, I don't need that honor. In other words, subhanAllah, what are we doing? Allah Ta'ala is honoring us and we're rejecting that honor. So please, we must cover up. It's part of our deen. It's part of those mandatory things that we all need to do in our lives properly. And these, if we don't do that as if we're not nourishing our hearts, we are not nourishing our hearts. So there are some people who don't nourish their hearts at all. And their hearts, they become weak. And then they become diseased. And then they die. And there are others who are nourishing their hearts. They would cover up. They will wear hijab, niqab, abayas. They will pray five times a day. They will give zakat. They will give charity. They will, they will be good to people. Or they will be, you know, uh, fasting, all of that. But then they would be sinning. Subhanallah, in this day and age, one of the problems is internet. Internet is such a huge problem of our time and age. Subhanallah, shaitan has, it's the biggest weapon of shaitan. Shaitan has found a way in our houses. 
Before it used to be TV, now it is TV plus internet. And another thing, cell phones. My sheikh, he calls cell phone a hell phone. Literally, it is taking people towards hell. This internet, this data bundles, this data on the cell phone, smartphones and iPhones and Androids and all of that and our tablets and our laptops. You know, laptops, we keep it in our laps. It's a laptop. And subhanAllah, we are browsing all of that filth. We're browsing all of what we browse. We go to a YouTube, Shaitan says, oh, why don't you go and listen to a lecture on YouTube? And we, we, we listen, we are listening and then on the sidebar, there are 10 other YouTube videos that are very inappropriate. The Shaitan will just make it pop up. And rather than you controlling your eyes and not going into it, we'll just click into it. And one after another, after another, after another. And we watch all of that filth on, on our internet, on our cell phones. SubhanAllah. And then there are girls who would go and have these, you know, they, these friendships, so-called friendships with other boys. They will have, you know, they will go into these social networking forums and chatting and, and Facebooks and, and Twitters and, and all of that. MySpace and you name it. SubhanAllah, forget about young girls, even elderly women. Elderly women. SubhanAllah found, got an incident that there was a woman in, in, uh, in the house. She was having, chatting with a boy and talking about all of that filth. And in the same house, there was her young son also doing the same with a woman on the internet. And SubhanAllah later found out they were in, in reality chatting with each other. And they were doing all of that, talking about all of that filthy stuff, thinking that the other person is, is, a, is a man or the other person is a girl. And in reality, they were talking to each other. Allah Akbar Kabira. Mother and a son. This is the fitna of the internet. And subhanAllah, when we see, look at all of that filth, of course, how can we be able to control our desires? The natural desires. And then people go, you know, into, into sins, fulfilling their desires by themselves. And then whenever they get an opportunity, they will go and have affairs with others and have physical relations with other people, the opposite genders. Women in marriage, there are, you know, subhanAllah, so many of them that they have affairs outside their marriage. Just because of this thing, because they look at all of that filth and then they cannot control themselves and then subhanAllah. These all sins, our hearts are becoming, are dying. <laughs> and this heart, was, we were to present it to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of judgment. يَوْمَ لَا يَنْفَعُ مَالٌ وَلَا بَنُونَ إِلَّا مَنْ أَطَى اللَّهَ بِقَلْمٍ سَلِيمٍ On the day of judgment, nothing is going to benefit us except who comes to Allah Ta'ala with a sound heart. This heart we want to present to Allah and we are making it die. We don't even care about that. Our care is about our outward, our bodies, our jism. Don't even think about our rule. So please, People who are not nourishing their hearts, please nourish your hearts. Do all of the things that you're supposed to do. Every single thing from the start to the end. And people who are nourishing their hearts, make sure that you're not poisoning your hearts. Please make sure that you are not poisoning your hearts. Don't poison your hearts. Don't make it disease. Don't let it die. Contr please protect it. For Allah, Allah Ta'ala is looking at, looking at our hearts every single day of our life. Every single moment of our life, Allah Ta'ala is looking at our hearts as to how do we keep it alive? How do we keep it protected? Are we nourishing it or are we not nourishing it? Are we keeping it away from all of the poisons? So please, we have to be completely following the deen, completely following Sharia, completely following Sunnah. I'll tell you one, one more thing. Every single worry that we have, every single worry, and everybody has their own worries. Right? Somebody, some people, their husbands don't behave. Others, their children are not on track. Others, they have no barakat in their time, in their wealth. Others, you know, people don't respect them. Others, you know, they are, they have some sort of a disease. Everybody is, is tested. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, that ma asabakum min musibatin fabima kasabat aydikum. That there is no calamity that falls on you except that that this is something that your own heart, own hands have earned. All the calamities that we have, it is something that our own hands have earned. Yani when we don't protect our hearts, when we continue making it filthy, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then sends us these calamities, these worries, 
Why? Because he then tries to wash our heart. We don't wash our heart ourselves. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then tries to wash our hearts by sending us these calamities. And if we keep our hearts clean, pure, sound, by taking care of it all the time, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not send us any calamity whatsoever. We will not have any worry whatsoever. Every single worry will go away. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that مَن يَتَّقِ اللَّهَ يَجْعَلْ لَهُ مَخْرَجًا Whoever will, have, will live a life of taqwa, what is taqwa? That no, a sin-free life is a, is a life of taqwa. In, in simple words. Yani if you take care of your heart all the time, Allah Ta'ala says, مَن يَتَّقِ اللَّهَ يَجْعَلْ لَهُ مَخْرَجًا I will take you out. I will create an exit for you from all of the worries. And Allah Ta'ala says, وَيَرْزُقُهُ مِنْ حَيْثُ لَا يَحْتَسِبُ And I will grant you risk, provision from the places that you have not even imagined. Our worries are all provision, lack of wealth, no barakat in wealth, accidents, oh, my world went that place, loss of business, etc. Why is all this, all of this happening? Because we are not taking care of our hearts. We are sinning, we are poisoning our hearts, we are not doing the mandatory things, we are not nourishing our hearts. And because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants that we go back to Him with a clean state of heart, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends us these worries to wash our hearts. Because we are not doing it by ourselves. So all of the worries will go away. All of the worries will go away if we take care of our hearts. The worries do come because of this very reason that we are not taking care of our hearts. Allah Ta'ala says in the Quran, ذَلِكَ جَزَاءُ مَنْ تَزَكَّى That the paradise is the place for those people who have purified their hearts, who have kept their hearts in a clean state. Allah Ta'ala's paradise is a pure, is a pure place. And he will never ever let anybody enter into his pure paradise whose hearts are not pure. And because we are not purifying our hearts, Allah Ta'ala sends us these calamities to make our hearts clean and pure. Why? Because we have recited kalima, because we are people of iman, Allah Ta'ala does want to send us into paradise. But we, we, because he cannot let anybody enter into his paradise with a, with a filthy state of heart, he, he, he tries to, he cleans it then. But why do we have to go through that, that way, that path? Why don't we clean it or keep it clean ourselves? Uh, our choice. And subhanAllah, if people, the even, if, if these calamities don't come to people, some people say, oh, you are always saying that, that, you know, if I don't sin, uh, and you know, um, Allah Ta'ala will give me a, a good life and look at that person, he's living a, sin, a sinful life. He doesn't pray, he doesn't fast, he do all, does all of those sins, but look at that person, he's living a life of luxury, he's living a life of, he's living a wealthy life. First thing first, don't judge people from their outward. Don't judge people from their outward. There are many people who are very wealthy people, but their hearts cry. Honestly, I met somebody, subhanAllah, who's such a wealthy man, and he, he, he said, I want to talk to you in private. And I, I went to talk to him in private and started crying with tears. With tears. He said, you look at all of these blessings around me, but me and my wife, we take sleeping pills at night to sleep. To sleep. We cannot sleep at night. He started crying. He started telling me about all of his worries. Don't look at people from their outward. There are people who Allah has given a lot of blessings outwardly, but their hearts don't have any peace whatsoever. Well, how can it have peace if they are sinning? Allah Ta'ala says, Allah bi zikrillahi tatma in al With the remembrance of Allah, the hearts find rest. Not with your wealth. First of all, don't judge people from their outward. Two, if they are, if they are living a luxurious life, and if they are living a life of comfort and peace, it's a very dangerous sign if they are sinning. Why? Because Allah Ta'ala has decided that I'm not going to purify their hearts in this dunya. Where is their purification? Their purification will be done in the grave if they are people of Iman. Their purification will be done on the day of judgment. Their purification can be done in the hellfire. Waliyazu billah. Allahu Akbar. And even people whose hearts don't get, whose hearts don't get purified in this dunya either 
because they have not Allah Taala did not purify it by not sending any calamities and worries to them, or they were so diseased and so filthy that these calamities, these worries, were not enough for their heart to get purified. What comes next? What comes next? Our grave. All of us are going into our graves, and this punishment of the grave—the snakes and the scorpions and the angels who is hitting people, the squeezing of the grave and all of that. Why do these punishment come to people? Have you ever thought about it? Because we have not purified our hearts in this dunya by ourselves, all of this process in the grave is again for the purification of our heart. If people's hearts are still not purified, the day of judgment itself is such a, such a terrible, terrible day for those people who have not purified their hearts. The hardship of that day will purify the hearts of the people. Even if people's hearts are not get, are not purified, you know, after all of this process, then Allah Ta'ala will send people into the hellfire, waliyahu billah. And as, you know, as soon as their hearts get purified, Allah Ta'ala, because of the iman in their heart, will take them out of the hellfire one by one, one by one, one by one, and will put into His paradise, which is a pure place. But why do we have to take all of that process? Today is the day that we must do tawbah from all of the sins. Today is the day that we should wash our hearts. Today is the day that we should take, make an intention that we are not going to keep our heart filthy. Today is the day that we must make a commitment with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that, Ya Allah, I have realized the purpose of my life. I realized the goal of my life. I now know that my job is to keep my heart clean. Just like I keep my house clean, I keep my outward clean, I keep my body clean, I keep my hair clean, I put, I adorn myself. Just like that, I have realized and I'll keep my heart clean as well. I'll keep, I'll keep my heart adorned as well. The, how does the heart get clean? By doing istighfar and tawbah, asking for forgiveness for all the sins. And tawbah. Tawbah means that you say sorry, but on top of that, you also say to Allah, Ya Allah, I'm not going to do that ever again. I'm not repeating this again, inshallah. Ya Allah, you give me tawfiq. I'm now, I'm, I'll never repeat this. All the sins, jealousy, hatred, arrogance, backbiting, eyes, limbs, private parts, tongue, ears, music, movies, no, no covering. All of that, Ya Allah, today I'm doing tawbah. I will never repeat that. All of these friendships over the internet, etc. I'm not repeating that, inshallah. Do tawbah. Make a commitment. This, with this, your heart will get washed. Allah Ta'ala is so generous, so merciful, so loving, so caring. He is waiting for us. He doesn't want to punish us. He does not want to punish us. He wants that He blesses us with all of the blessings that we, we have. He wants that we live a, a life of peace. That's what He wants. <coughs> he is waiting for our tawbah. We sleep at night. Allah Ta'ala doesn't sleep. Allah Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa has said that in one of the hadith Qudsi that when my slave comes to me one hand span I come to him an arm's length. Two hand spans. He comes to me two hand span I go to him my mercy goes to him an arm's length. He comes to me walking and my mercy goes to him running. Allah Akbar. This is how the hearts gets washed. And what adorns the hearts how can we do the makeup of the hearts? The makeup of the, of the heart is the dhikr of Allah Ta'ala. Everything has a polish and the polish of the heart is the dhikr of Allah. We polish our hearts, we adorn our hearts, we do the makeup of the heart by doing the dhikr of Allah. So please, and dhikr should be done after learning. We should learn how to do dhikr and then we should do dhikr. There are many askar that are mentioned in the Quran and the Hadith. But then our mashayikh, our spiritual guides have, have come up with different askar. And all of us honestly should have a sheikh in our life. We should have to do, we should do bait with one of the mashayikh and then learn askar from him, keep in touch with him, take him as our spiritual guide, take him as our murabbi who will guide us at every single second of our life and, who, and, and we should all must develop, clean our hearts in his guidance. And this is the process that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has kept. And that's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, that, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, ittaqullaha wa kunu ma'as sadiqeen. Then, oh, you who believe, have taqwa of Allah, and you hook yourself up with the people of Allah, with the truthful people. 
This is what our, this has been our tradition. This is how our hearts are made clean. And we take the azkar from them and we do it, implement it in our life and on a daily basis, not once in a week, once in a month, once in a year. No, every single day. Just like we clean our house every day, we do our mamulat, our azkar every single day. This is what we should be doing every single day of our life. So please do tawbah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ask Allah Ta'ala for forgiveness. Ask Allah Ta'ala, tell Allah Ta'ala, Ya Allah, I've been sinning, I will not do that again. And Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, He's calling all of us. Where are you going? Where are you going? What has diluted you? What has deceived you from your generous Lord? Allah, is, Allah Ta'ala is so generous. Go back to Allah. Subhanallah. You know, Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam, he asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that, Ya Allah, when a muttaqi calls on you, what do you say? Allah ta'ala said, I say, Labbaik. Now here am I, here am I, what do you want, my slave? Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam, what do you say to a person, an abe, the person who worships, when he calls on you, what do you say to him? So Allah ta'ala said, I say to him, Labbaik. What do you want? So Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam, what do you say to a person when a when, when you, what do you say to a righteous person when he calls on you? So Allah Ta'ala said that I say to him, Labbaik, what do you want? So Sayyidina Musa Islam said to Allah Ta'ala, Ya Allah, what do you say to a person who is sinning? Who is a sinner? When he calls on you, when he comes to you realizing that, oh, I have a rub, I've been disobeying him. What do you say to him when a sinner calls on you? So Allah Ta'ala said to Sayyidina Musa Alayhi Salaam, when a sinner calls on me, I say, Labbaik, Labbaik, Labbaik. Sayyidina Musa Alayhi Salaam said, Why Allah? When all of these righteous people call on you, call on you, you say, Labbaik, when a sinner calls on you, you say three times, Here I am, what do you want? So Allah Ta'ala said, all of these righteous people, they were relying on their good deeds. They were all relying on their good deeds. But when the sinner calls on me, he is relying on my mercy. So I, I reply back with, to him with three lapayk. <laughs> so Allah Ta'ala is so merciful, so generous. SubhanAllah, this ayat of Qur'an, it always amazes me. One of my favorite ayat of the Qur'an. All of the ayat are favorite, but this is such a beautiful ayat. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala says in the Qur'an that, قُلْ يَا ibadi. That tell, oh, oh my beloved sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that ya ibadi, that oh my slaves, oh my slaves, Allah Ta'ala is calling some people with this attribute of mine, my slaves. You know this, this word my, it expresses love. You know, when you have, you, you want to express your love to your child, for example, you say, oh my daughter, Come here, my son, come listen to me. It expresses love. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ibadi, my slaves. Oh, my slaves. I mean, looks like Allah ta'ala is going to talk to muttaqeen, you know, people, abideen, salihin, sa'imeen, people who fast, people who worship, people of taqwa, people who worship all the time. Who is Allah Ta'ala going to talk to? Ya ibadi, alladheena asrafu ala anfusihim. Oh my slaves, who have drowned themselves in sins, who have oppressed themselves. Oh my slaves, look at love. What do you want to call, talk, what do you want to say to them, oh Allah? Allah Ta'ala says, Ya ibadi, alladheena asrafu ala anfusihim, la taqnatu min rahmatin la. Don't be despair of the mercy of Allah. Never feel despair of the mercy of Allah. Inna Allah yaghfirud dhunuba jami'a. Indeed, Allah Ta'ala forgives all the sins. Inna hu huwa al-ghafoorur raheem. Indeed, He is very forgiving. He is very merciful. So let's all go back to Allah. Let's ourselves clean our hearts with the, with the rain of the mercy of Allah. Let's wash our hearts with the rain of the mercy of Allah. Let's not go through that purification process. Let's choose ourselves to wash our hearts so that we can present the sound heart on the Day of Judgment to Allah as a gift. Allah Ta'ala has given us so many gifts in our life. 
our eyes, our tongue, our ears, our intellect, our limbs, our wealth, our houses, our spouses, our children, every single blessing. You know, we should also give a gift back to Allah in return, isn't it? What is that gift? That gift is that we we protect our heart from the filth of the sins and let's present that heart as a gift on the Day of Judgment. On the Day of Judgment, nothing will benefit you, your wealth, your children, nothing except who comes to Allah Ta'ala with a pure, sound, sparkling, beautiful heart. And the paradise is the, is the place for those people who have been able to keep their hearts pure. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us all tawfiq that we be able to do true tawbah from all of our sins and we make a commitment with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we are not going to sin anymore inshallah. We will live a life of shariat and sunnah. We will leave every single sin from our life inshallah. And inshallah ta'ala will keep our heart protected and Allah ta'ala will inshallah bless us in our life, in this life and in the grave. Allah ta'ala will make our grave from the, the garden from paradise and inshallah Ta'ala will enter all of us into paradise without any questioning, without any reckoning. And most of it all, Allah Ta'ala will inshallah grant us His perfect vision. وَآخْرُ دَعْوَانَا أَنِ الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ Inshallah, before dua, if we can all recite the kalimat of Tawbah. Our Mashaykh have, have taught us some Kalimat, some words, some phrases of Tawbah. Basically, it is renewal of our Iman, Tajdeed of our Iman. And then asking Allah Ta'ala for the forgiveness of the sins that we have done in our life. Inshallah, let's recite this Kalimat of Tawbah with sincerity of our hearts, Inshallah, with a commitment. Anybody who wants to take bait in the Salsala, who want to take bait, Inshallah, they can make the intention of bait. And Inshallah Ta'ala will provide you the means as to how can you keep in touch. Uh, but inshallah ta'ala, anybody wants to make ba- take bed, they can make intention of that. Others can inshallah recite it with the intention of tawbah. But I recommend everybody must take bed with somebody. Inshallah ta'ala. This is something that is indeed absolutely must in this time it is, especially and of course in all the times. So alhamdulillah wa kafa wa salamun ala ibadihi ladhin astafa amma ba'd. So we can recite this kalimat. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. La ilaha illallah Muhammadur Rasulullah Amantu billahi Wa malaikatihi Wa kutubihi Wa rusulihi Wal yawmil akhiri Wal qadri khayrihi Wa sharrihi Min Allahi ta'ala Wal ba'thi Ba'dal mawt آمنت بالله كما هو بأسمائه وصفاته وقبلت جميع أحكامه إقرار باللسان وتصديق بالقلب أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أستغفر الله ربي من كل ذنب وأتوب إليه برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين. جديزة الكلمات إن شاء الله يا الله تعالى accept our tawbah anybody who wants who wanted to take bait إن شاء الله this is جديزة الكلمات there few معمولات that our مشايخ have taught. If we can, inshallah ta'ala, do these ma'amulat consistently, you will feel a, a blessing in your life, inshallah. This is the polish of our heart, inshallah, on a daily basis, as I've explained. So one is doing istighfar, morning, evening, hundred times each. So hundred times in the morning, hundred times in the evening. Astaghfirullah rabbi min kulli dhambin wa atubu ilayh. Inshallah, there will be a leaflet, I think, that that will be going around as well of these ma'amulat. You can have a look at that. And later, inshallah, but hundred times istighfar morning and in the evening. The second is salawat on the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala ali Sayyidina Muhammad wa barik wa sallim. That's also hundred times in the morning and hundred times in the evening. The third is recitation of the Quran every single day. Even if it's little, but please recite Quran. 
quarter juz, half juz, one juz, whatever you can recite easily. But please recite it every day. Of course, there are days that you cannot recite, but other than that, please recite it every day. And the fourth thing is the dhikr of Allah Ta'ala in the heart. The terminology that is used is called muraqaba. The way to do that is that you should get some time during the day when you're by yourself and sit with closed eyes, have this intention as if Allah Ta'ala's mercy is falling on your heart and as if the heart is doing the dhikr of Allah with his name, Allah, Allah, Allah. Heart is doing it and I'm listening. So don't say anything with your tongue. It's a very relaxed thing. Sit just with this intention. Ignore any worldly thought. Sit with this intention as if Allah Ta'ala's mercy is coming on the heart and as if the heart is doing Allah, 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 I'm listening. So you should focus on the left hand side of your chest, a little lower on your left hand side of the chest. So sit, do it for 10, 15, 20 minutes inshallah, the more the better. But it's very, very powerful dhikr. So four ma'mulat, istighfar morning and evening 100 times each, uh, salawat on the power of the morning, evening 100 times each, recitation of the Quran and for Aqaba, 15-20 minutes inshallah. And last but not the least, please have istazar of Allah. Always have this feeling Allah Ta'ala is looking. Allah Ta'ala says in the Quran, وَهُوَ مَعَكُمْ أَيْنَمَا كُنْتُمْ He is with you wherever you are. Always know that Allah Ta'ala is looking. My husband might not be looking. My children might not be looking. My father might not be looking. Nobody might be looking. Allah Ta'ala is looking. He is looking when I am by myself, in my room, in my bed, in my toilet. You know, in public, in private, everywhere Allah Ta'ala is looking at me. So have this feeling, please. It's called Waqoof Qalbi. And please do everything Sunnah way. Also memorize Masnoon Du'as and try to get into the habit of reciting these Du'as as well, please. It's not a barakat in these Du'as. Entering into the house, leaving the house, getting into the car, etc. Going into the toilet, leaving the toilet, etc. Please, alright? Please get into the habit of reciting Masnoon Du'as. So if you do all what I've said, four Mamulat and this is Tazar of Allah along with Sunnahs and Masnoon Du'as, Inshallah, you'll feel the blessings in your in your house, in your life, in your relationships, everything. Inshallah, all right. Inshallah, before dua, if you can do muraqaba for a few moments, just close your eyes, just sit with this intention as if Allah Taala's mercy is coming onto the heart, and as if the heart is doing the zikr of Allah with this beautiful name, Allah, Allah, Allah. Wash all the filth away and change my dead heart. Wash all the filth away and change my dead heart. Make me alive again. Give me a fresh start. Wash all the filth away and change my dead heart. Make me alive again. Give me a fresh start. So change my heart and wash all the filth away. So change my heart and wash all the filth away. Don't leave me drowning here alone and astray. I spent my life running away from you. And now I have nowhere to turn except you. I turn to you. I'm begging you to be saved. And change me into an obedient slave. I've been doing all my life what I craved. Shaitan and nafs have always had me enslaved. I am ashamed that I have broken your rules. Worship my nafs and a few ignorant fools. But now I know the path leading me to thee. I bow to you. I'm asking you to help me. I wish your name to be engraved on my heart. I will be grateful to you, change this dead heart. My heart is darkened, so my eyes remain dry. Hypocrisy and hubris won't let me cry. I'm at your door, I'm begging you, 
let me in. I'm at your door. I'm begging you, let me in. Don't push me back to my hopeless life of sin. So chain my heart and forgive my sins this day. Don't leave me drowning here alone and astray. Wash all the filth away and change my dead heart. Make me alive again. Give me a fresh start. La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah Inshallah make dua Subhana Rabbi al-A'la al-Wahhab Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad Wa ala ala Sayyidina Muhammad Wa barik wa sallim Rabbana Salamna anfusana Wa in lam taghfir lana Wa tarhamna lanakunanna min al-khasirin ربنا لا تزغ قلوبنا بعد إذ هديتنا وهب لنا من لدنك رحمة إنك أنت الوهاب لا إله إلا أنت سبحانك إنا كنا من الظالمين يا مقلب القلوب ثبت قلوبنا على دينك يا مصرف القلوب سرق قلوبنا على طاعتك اللهم حبب إلينا الإيمان وزينه في قلوبنا وكر إلينا الكفر والفسوق والعشيان وجعلنا من الراشدين اللهم آت نفوسنا تقواها وزكها أنت خير من زكاها أنت وليها ومولاها يا رحم الرحيمين يا أكرم الأكرمين يا كريم يا غفار يا رحيم يا ودود يا مهاب يا ستار يا ستار يا ستار Ya Hanan, Ya Manan, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, please accept this gathering from all of us. Ya Allah, Ya Rahman Rahimin, all of these. Ya Allah, women have come. Ya Allah, please accept their coming. Ya Allah, please accept this from all of us. Ya Allah, we have come from far. Ya Allah, we have traveled a long distance. Ya Rahman Rahimin, please, Ya Allah, don't. Ya Allah, please, don't this. Ya Allah, effort go waste. Ya Allah, all of these people. Ya Allah, don't please let this effort go waste. Ya Allah, please accept this gathering from all of us. Ya Allah, please forgive us of our lack of sincerity, the lack of ikhlas, lack of adab. Ya Allah, the shortcomings in what was said. Ya Allah, please, we beg you that you forgive all of our shortcomings. And Ya Allah, show your generosity. Accept this gathering from all of us, Ya Allah. Ya Arham Ar-Rahimeen, Ya Akram Al-Akrameen. Ya Allah, this very day, we beg your forgiveness and do tawbah from all the sins that we have been doing until now. Ya Allah, please accept our tawbah. Ya Allah, please make us, keep us consistent in our tawbah. Ya there are many times that we have done tawbah in the past. But Ya Allah, we break it so easily. Ya Allah, please make our tawbah tawbah and also Ya Allah, keep it, Ya Allah, make, make us, keep us consistent on this tawbah until our death, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, Ya Rahman Rahimeen. Please, Ya Allah, we beg you. That you please, Ya Allah, please remember us all the time. Ya Allah, you yourself have said, Faskuruni Askurkum, that you remember me and I'll remember you. Ya Allah, we have done our part. Ya Allah, we did try to remember you. This was the gathering of your zikr. Ya Allah, you please remember us as well. Ya Allah, there is not a single second ever in our life that, that we live without you. Ya Allah, we see without, with, because of you, we talk because of you. We walk because of you, Ya Allah, our hearts beat because of you, our lungs breathe because of you, Ya Allah, we have houses from you, we have spouses because of you, we have children because of you, this air, the sun, the moon, the stars, the flowers, the rain, the water, Ya Allah, every single thing is because of you. Ya Allah, we are in need of you every single second of our lives. Please, Ya Allah, we beg you that you please, Ya Allah, please always remember us. Shower us with your blessings, Ya Allah, the dunya and the akhirat. Ya Allah, please give us the best of the dunya and the best of the akhirat. With khair, with barakat, with afiyat, with wusat, Ya Allah. 
allow us to use our dunya for the sake of our akhirat ya rabbal rahimi ya allah please save our iman please save iman of our children ya allah ya allah please save iman of every single person is going to come until the day of judgment from our generations ya allah it's only you who can save us from in this time of sharan fitna ya allah please protect us ya allah ya allah protect this madrasa ya allah protect this school ya allah from all evil all shurur all fitnas ya allah accept it ya allah please accept it all the students who are who come to study in this madrasa ya allah all the teachers who teach in this madrasa everybody who is doing khidmat of this madrasa in any shape or form financially or physically or morally ya allah please accept all of them ya allah please accept all of them ya rahman rahim ya akram al akram we beg you that you accept all of us for the service of your beautiful deen ya allah we know we are not worthy to serve your deen we are not qabil ya allah there are many qabil people how dare ya allah we indeed are not but ya allah we also know that it is not about qabiliyat it's only about qubuliyat it's only about acceptance please accept all of us ya arhamar rahimi ya allah all the sabab that we need in the service of your deen provide those sabab from your infinite treasures ya allah khud khair barkat afiyat wasat ya allah ya arhamar rahimi all the people who ask for duas you know their needs more than we do we beg you ya allah that you please fulfill their needs from your infinite treasures with khair with barakat with afiyat with wasat people who are sick ya allah spiritually or physically sick please grant them perfect cure ya allah ya allah people who are in calamities ya allah so many people are in calamities ya allah because of rain because of floods because of ya allah war because of ya allah drought because of so many things ya allah please remove the all of their calamities ya allah we know ya rabbal rahimin it is our sins that have invited these calamities it's nobody else is us Ya Allah, but we do tawba today from all the sins. Ya Allah, Ya Allah, we do tawba on their behalf as well. Ya Allah, on behalf of the whole ummah, please remove these calamities. Ya Allah, Ya Rahman Rahimi, please be happy with us at every single second of our lives, especially Ya Allah, the time of our death. Ya Allah, allow us to recite kalima as our last words. Please make our nafs nafsul mutmainna before that day, just out of your fadl and your mercy. Ya Allah. Ya Allah, please make our graves from the gardens of paradise. Please fill our graves with noor, with light. Please, Ya Allah, Ya Allah, please make the questions of the grave easy for us. Ya Allah, please make it spacious. Please save us from punishments. Ya Allah, on the day of judgment, please raise us in a state that you are happy. You make us from your mukarrabin. Ya Allah, please give our books in our right hands. Please give us the shade of your throne. Please give us the water from the blessed hands of your beloved Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Please grant all of us His intercession, and let us all please enter into paradise without any reckoning, without any questioning, without any punishment. Ya Allah, and let us all please, please give all of us a space in the blessed feet of Your beloved Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And most of it all, Ya Allah, grant all of us Your perfect vision. Ya Allah, Ya Allah, You have all the right to say. that who are you to ask me all of these things i used to give it to say the aisha i used to give it to khadija i used to give it to rabia who are you but ya allah he we don't ask you who do we ask ya allah they you were their rab and you are our rab ya allah we agree that we are not qabil we are not even close to what who but those people were but ya allah we don't lose hope you yourself have said to us ya allah we must not lose hope We are not losing hope. We are begging you, Allah, Ya Rahman Rahim. Please grant us all of what we have asked for and what we couldn't ask, Ya Rahman Rahim. Rabbana taqabbal minna, inna ka anta sami wal alim. Wa tum alayna ya maulana, inna ka anta tawab al rahim. Wa sallallahu taala ala khair khulqihi Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'in. Bi rahmatika, Ya Rahman Rahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbi.